When we begin with React development, the first thing we learned is how do you manage state and how do we pass props to components. So today I want to show you three levels in which we can manage state, especially local state in React. So when we talk about state, there's two main states. There's local state and server state. In this context, we are talking about local state. Local state is all about maintaining what is happening within the user interface. Let's say we are keeping track of whether a button has been clicked or whether a switch has been toggled on and off. So these are local state because it impacts or whatever the user sees. However, when we talk about server state, we are talking about synchronizing the local state to wireless that is on the server. Let's say you're fetching a list of posts that lives on a database in a server somewhere. We want to synchronize the local state such that we are able to obtain the post from that server and then we can display it on the front end. So that's the difference between server and local state. So in this video, I'm going to show you three ways in which we can manage local state. I just want to declare this problem first. Let's say we have a really nested component. So we have a main component, nested in it is a dashboard component, nested in it is a welcome banner, and lastly we have a title banner. The problem here is, let's say we have a user object. So this user object could be something that is from from an authentication workflow. So once you get the user object from the main component, we want to pass it down to the title such that we can display a welcome message to the user. So how will we do that? Without using any fancy state management, the first level of state management is prop drilling. So prop drilling is basically passing props down, passing state down to the component tree through props. In the dashboard, we can accept a prop called user. So we have to pass from main when we declare, declare the dashboard we have to pass the user down into the dashboard component. And then for the welcome banner, after we have declared the dashboard, the dashboard has to pass down the prop of the user into the welcome banner. And lastly for title, we will finally accept the user prop and then we can display a welcome message like a uh, welcome user.name. So this entire workflow to just display a simple object passed down through four components. And let's see how we might implement that. So here we have just welcome Elliot. I've simulated what it's like to pass down the component. So under our app.tsx, this is the main app. So we have a main component. So we declare an object called user and he has a name called Elliot. And what we did was we declared this dashboard component and we passed down the user prop. If we go inside the dashboard, we can see that it takes in our user prop and we pass down the user back into the welcome banner. And we go down one more level to welcome banner, we can see that we accept the user prop again. And now to finally display the title, we have to pass the user prop down once more. And then in the title, we can see that we finally accept the user and then we can render the user.name. So this is exactly what happens in this picture where we have four nested components and we have to pass down an object from the parent component all the way to the, down to the child. And you can see that this is really troublesome and also if you have a more nested component, this might be very hard to maintain down the line. So let's talk about the second level of state management which is using React Context API. So a context is, think about context, what does it mean to have context of something? Context meaning you have knowledge of what was happening. So when we talk about React context, it's really about giving the components, all the components in your tray, the context of a global state. So you can basically nest child in a React context and all the children will have access to whatever information is stored in that context. And React actually gives us a really nice interface of dealing with this kind of context. So React exports a context API where we can de declare a context. So this context basically stores all the global variables you want your child component to use. And then you can call use context, which is a hook from React. And you pass in the context. So the context uh, contains all the variables. And we use the context. This level component will give you all the will give you all the global variables that you want to pass down to your children. However, the issue with this is sometimes it, is, it becomes very convoluted and then you have to wrap your entire main component with that context provider just so that they can have access. When I started with learning context API from React, it, I found it really confusing. I found a new solution that I think might help you guys even more when dealing with local state and that tool is something called Jotai. So Jotai is the Japanese word for Zhuangtai. Zhuangtai means state in uh, Jap Chinese or Japanese. So this Jotai actually introduced a very simple to use API to share this kind of global state throughout your components. So Jotai actually in introduces us to this concept of an atom. An atom is a fundamental block of states in which we can store. So I want to draw out something for you. So imagine we have a circle. So this circle is like a, a state. It's an atom. So this atom, let's say we can store a user variable, like a user user atom. So it stores all the information about user, just like this user object. And then basically we can have multiple of these atoms. So let's duplicate this. Let's say we have an atom for a, a bunch of listings, a listings atom. Each atom contains a specific variable inside it, which is the state of it. And imagine we have a big backpack, right? A big backpack, backpack of atoms. So this backpack of atoms store all atoms and we can have as many atoms as we want within Jotai. And then basically whenever we want to use it, so we can actually delete all these props because we no longer need the props. Wherever we need the atom, 
or wherever we need the state, we can just directly pull it out from the backpack directly into that component. So this backpack of atoms will be like a global file in which we store all our state. And whatever atom we need, we can directly pull it from anywhere we want. So that's the power of uh, the concept of, at uh, of atom and jotai. So let's look at how it works. To get started with jotai, we must first uh, do npm install jotai. So after doing npm install jotai, you'll be able to access the jotai API. And what we're gonna do is, to create a backpack of atoms, let's go under our source directory or any directory, we can create a file called atoms.ts. So if you're using JavaScript, you can just use .js. But basically what we can do is we can import this atom from Jotai and we can go and export and declare all our atoms. So let's say I have a user called user equals to a uh, name and it's a John Doe and the age is let's say four. So to create atom, we can just call export const user atom. We call the atom function and passing it the initial uh, value for the atom. So we can also directly declare it here, right? But since we declare a user a variable, we can just pass it in here. So after declaring this user atom, it's like storing a user uh, at, within the back. So let's say now within the title, let's say I'm not expecting a user anymore. Let's say I don't accept, expect any props anymore. How do I actually access this user object? So in React, we have this thing called a uh, use, uh, use state, right? So this use state basically takes in the initial variable and gives you two variables, which is the actual value and the setter. That means a function to actually set the value of the state. For, ad for Jotai, it's a very similar concept. So first, let's import the user atom from the atoms uh, directory. So this is the backpack. We're now pulling the atom down from the backpack. And now Jotai actually gives us another function, use atom, right? We can import it from Jotai. And this use atom is exactly like what use state does. So we can have a user and set user, right? But this time we are getting it from user atom. So user atom basically gives you that unit of state and this use atom from Jotai will actually take the atom and let you use it. So then it returns you two functions just like use state. So you can see it's, it's a very similar API to the use state API within React. So we get back the user and set user. And this user will basically, you can see if you hover over it, you see the, the type definition for name and age. This comes from the atom that we have declared in that backpack. So let's save it. And now if you uh, welcome user.name and we go back here, we can see welcome John Doe. So you see that now we do have to go and do prop drilling in order to ex in order to pass down state down components. So we can declare atoms anywhere within our app and without using any providers or any wrapping uh, higher order functions, we're able to extract out the atom. We're able to extract out the state from the atom. So here I have another component that I want to showcase, the power of Jotai. So let's say we have a standard uh, website here, web app, and usually when we make an update to the website or we want to announce something, Developers will usually put out a banner that basically informs the user what has changed. So we have a developer update and then it's in this banner on top. However, we want the user to be able to dismiss it because it can get annoying sometimes. So whenever the user sees it, and let's say they decide that they have seen it and they don't want to see it anymore, they should be able to press the cross button and dismiss the banner and it will never show up again. So how do we actually maintain that local state and persist it over time? So we can do that with a, a state called, let's say, show banner, right? And we can export that as atom. However, to actually persist it over tabs, Jotai actually provides us with a nice utility function called atom with storage. So let's go into the banner example. So this is just a, this is just a UI for how the thing works. So we have an alert, right? So this alert maps to this uh, square box, this rectangular box alert here. And then now we have just a hero section, which is this uh, component library component here. So we can first, what we do is, let's import use atom from Jotai. Then we import this atom with storage from Jotai slash utils. So Jotai gives us that utility function to basically declare at an atom with storage. So this atom with storage, it provides a wrapper over local storage and a normal state. So when we use atom with storage, instead of it just disappearing after the user closes the tab, it actually persists the, the value of the atom within local storage so that whenever they revisit, revisit the website on the same browser, the atom will have the same value and then we can persist that change over time. So after importing those, let's import the button and let's set the show banner atom. So we declare this show banner atom and we have this atom with storage and this show banner uh, value is basically what will be mapped to the local storage key. So this is what is gonna, the name is gonna be stored in local storage and at first we're gonna set true. So at first we want to show the banner, but then after they press close, we want to then toggle it to false and save that into local storage. Then let us on a uh, circle but uh, on this circle icon where we click on it, we want to set show banner to false. But where do we get this show banner? We can you get the show banner function from use atom and we pass in the show banner atom. So we pass in this atom with storage to add this actual use atom, which returns us the value and the setter function. Next, we can then conditionally render. So Basically, if we want to show the banner, so if the toggle is true, we want to show this alert, right? 
Else, if it's not true, meaning that they have dismissed it by clicking this button, so if show banner is false, we want to sh show them a button that gives them the option to show the banner again. So I'm gonna save it, and now here is what it looks. So we press this, and it closes. If I refresh it, you can see that it doesn't show the banner. But if I press show banner again, and I keep refreshing the page, it will show. And how it's managed to do that is, if you go into the browser, and we go to storage, and come down to logo storage, we can see that there's a variable called show banner here that says true. Let's see if I press close, we can see that it's automatically sets to false. So this show banner value comes from this thing that we have declared here. So that's just a key that is being used in local storage. If we, if we go and refresh it, we can see that the local storage variable is persisted, and that is how a Jotai gives you that API to manage local storage states. We can implement all these states ourselves, but having Jotai's API for this kind of utility function make it so much simpler to manage global states. So I hope that that has shown you three levels of managing state. Hey, thank you for watching the video. If you like the video, liking and subscribing would help the channel a lot to grow. If you like this video, maybe you can watch this video on me explaining how to become a better web developer. Thank you so much for watching and have a good day.